you don't have to wonder why people question this transaction and call this corporate greed. You know, M&T has become a monster now, at least, you know, in the Northeast. This winter, more than a thousand people in New England are about to lose their jobs. Not because they're doing bad work, because one bank is planning to buy up another. Certainly for those directly affected, it's devastating. People's United Bank has been the corporate rock in the city for roughly 175 years. It's one of the largest employers, or was one of the largest employers, until the recent contemplated merger uh, with M&T. The new bosses plan to fire about 700 people in Bridgeport, 250 in Vermont, and dozens more in Massachusetts once the merger goes through. It's a city that is, is, is on the move, it's growing. The housing market in Bridgeport is much stronger. You know, Bridgeport just recently opened a, a 6,000 seat concert epitheater downtown, right next to a 10,000 seat arena. The announcement by, by Peoples of NM&T about the potential job losses um, would one largely cur curtail a lot of the economic progress. We want to welcome businesses in to be partners to help participate in we think is, 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 is a the continuation of a, of, of a renaissance despite COVID. Bank mergers tend to be bad for everyone who isn't a bank executive. Those corporate insiders get giant checks when they make these deals, but customers get a world with fewer choices and more potential for abusive fees, sneaky marketing tactics, and even out and out fraud. Research shows that fewer banks in a community also means worse rates of job creation and lower pay for local workers across the board, not just those who get tossed aside after a merger. And it makes it harder for local businesses to get loans, especially for entrepreneurs and small business owners from black and brown communities. In Bridgeport, Connecticut, that means that allowing M&T to buy People's United would knock the whole community for a loop for at least a year or two, according to a local economist. All I ever done my whole life is bank with People's. Ever since my, my, my first checking account, you know, People's Bank, uh, my first mortgage, People's Bank. That's all I've ever known, banking wise. Um, so for someone like me, and I dare say thousands of others, they're going to have to make a strong statement about why we should stay on board. What's a little bit of a front to the people of the city of Bridgeport. The good news for those workers and their families is that Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has the power to block M&T's acquisition of People's United. The bad news? So far, he's blessed every bank merger that's come his way. Banks are now merging at the fastest pace since the financial crisis. In fact, since 2006, regulators have allowed 3,500 consecutive bank mergers through without a single denial. Ever since 1960, the Fed has had a legal duty to block a bank merger that is not in the public interest. Fewer jobs, fewer small business loans, and less consumer choice doesn't sound like it serves the public interest, now does it? Jerome Powell's term ends in a few months, and the president is deciding whether to renominate him. If Powell wants to keep his job, he might want to make sure a thousand People's United employees aren't kicked out of theirs. <laughs>